We can start, please, Sergey. Hi, everyone. Uh, today we will continue our last time we were looking at the centralized cases of stablecoins like, like USDT, USDC, USDP. Uh, and uh, we also uh, got into the MakerDAO design, how it works. Now we continue with this decentralized uh, designs and hybrid designs. So today uh, we start with CRV uh, USD, which is a new coin. It's not yet stable coin. It's not yet issued. Uh, the white paper was uh, uh, issued for the general public just uh, last year. There was about a few months of active work. Uh, some contracts of this stable coin are now deployed. Now it's tested. And I think in, in, a, in a while, in a short while, it will be presented to the market. But we will look at the design because it's really interesting what innovation it brings. And what uh, new stuff uh, actually uh, CRVUSD is uh, uh, giving us. What's, what new innovation design uh, they are proposing. Remember this key concept of CDP, collateralized debt position, which works in MakerDAO. When we put into smart contract uh, the, the pledge, the collateral, issue our stable coin and have this red arrow of uh, possible liquidation when uh, we have uh, the collateralization ratio lower than it is allowed by our smart contract, by our rules. So the key... Uh, Innovation here for CRVUSD is the liquidation. Uh, in, in, the, in the MakerDAO concept, liquidation is quite, uh, is really undesirable event. So it, it shouldn't happen because if it happens, then um, uh, actually the user loses uh, collateral, uh, has uh, to pay some uh, liquidation fees. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really uh, undesirable uh, thing. And, and the, everyone should avoid it, but it's different for the CRVUSD because CRVUSD is proposing uh, so-called lending liquidating AMM algorithm. L AMM, uh, that's uh, automated market maker. What is automated market maker? We will uh, look at the next uh, uh, lecture. So it will be the topic for our next lecture. Actually, this is the centralized exchange. So, and what happens is that uh, in the case of CRV USD, collateral liquidated not in a white as a white uh, one-time event, but it's uh, it starts slowly converting from collateral to the stable coin. So it's uh, it's sold a little bit to improve uh, the collateralization ratio. So that that's what happens actually, and that's that's the key innovation which uh, is brought by uh, Curve Protocol in their new stable coin. And they called it LLAMMA. Uh, so don't, don't uh, try to deep, uh, get deeper into the, how AMM works now. That's just for understanding. We will look at it in the ne our next uh, lecture. So uh, this is actually so-called con continuous liquidation and deliquidation. Uh, why why we need this? Because maybe that's okay to uh, be with the, to work uh, and to use this one time liquidation. The point, uh, the answer is in so called capital efficiency. Because if you um, have the standard CDP design with the one time liquidation, you need to uh, uh, have quite good reserve for uh, of your collateral, not to be liquidated. You need this additional reserve, uh, especially if you use volatile assets as Ethereum, as uh, Bitcoin, or other crypto assets uh, or digital assets. But here in this design, you can uh, have less reserve. It means that you can achieve more capital efficiency with the uh, uh, assets that you have. So it means that if you go with the same amount of Ethereum to the MakerDAO, you print let's say 100 DAI. If you go with the same amount of Ethereum to uh, Curve protocol, uh, you will print 120 CRV USD. Means that you have this 20 US dollars additional 
uh, uh, assets that you that you get uh, as a stable coins, you may use them however you wherever you want. So uh, basically, uh, that's uh, the estimates of potential liquidation losses. We cannot avoid this liquidation losses. They will happen. And they, uh, the protocol after testing says that if the price of the collateral asset drops 10% below the liquidation threshold, you only lose, uh, for three days, you only lose 1% of collateral. Uh, and we know uh, that crypto assets are not uh, predictable in terms of price, and it might happen. And I remember it was in the March of 2020 when Ethereum uh, went down uh, it's extremely low and it happened in one day after a few days it's it, it bounced back so this type of design with the uh, uh, as i tell you uh, landing liquidating amm algorithm we can actually uh, tolerate it it's not a problem for us while in the previous design uh, of the dai and maker dao design where we have one time liquidation event uh, we will be liquidated, liquidated immediately. We cannot restore our position, so it will be liquidated. Uh, and um, one more thing which uh, uh, is added to this design is so-called automatic stabilizer and monetary policy. So it means that uh, the smart contracts of CRV USD uh, actually work in an automatic way and if we have the price of our stable stable uh, stable coin higher than one dollar, uh, we may actually print stable coin into the curve pool. What the curve pool is, we will talk next in the next lecture. Uh, if, uh, on the other hand, uh, price is lower, then we then smart contracts of our uh, actually CRV USD coin withdrawing. Um, stable coin from uh, curve pools and uh, actually burn them. What is curve pool? Curve pool uh, might be uh, actually a, a pool of a few stable coins, CRV USD, USDT, USDC, maybe DAI. Uh, in this pool, you can exchange almost one-to-one -one between any of these uh, four free uh, stable coins. That's, that's the liquidity pool of uh, uh, curve. The, pro the, the curve protocol. So the, the curve is actually is is AMM, the specific one which is designed for stable coins. And uh, on top of what they have, they are proposing this additional idea of stable coin with this novel design of liquidation, uh, which will allow you to be more capital efficient. Uh, and, and they also have this automatic. Uh, stabilizer and monetary policy, which is which is always which is also great. More than that, I think, uh, and they're writing that uh, as soon as you will be a liquidity provider in liquidity in the curve liquidity pools, maybe you can take these LP tokens and use them as a collateral to issue uh, curve USD. So it's it's uh, it's really a great uh, thing because. Um, if you will be provider, you're not just earning on fees from use, uh, from uh, your assets, which are used for exchanging one stable coin to another, but you also can additionally print um, CRV USD, again, put them into the pool. So it's all increases your APY. Uh, I saw the question, what is APY? APY is annual percentage yield. So it's, it's uh, like the measurement of the profitability for one year. There is another uh, uh, actually uh, used term, which is APR, annual percentage rate. APR it might be for the loan. Uh, APY, it's more used for some for investments, for uh, deposits. So it's, it's something that brings you additional yield. Uh, this is how it looks um, on, uh, in their UI design. You see here that uh, they use SFRX if staked Frax Ethereum. We will also talk in the, our later lectures about liquid staking derivatives, which is SFRX if actually is. That's the liquid staking derivative. You can put it as a collateral, uh, print uh, CRV USD, and here you see that the liquidation rate, 
range is from 107, 1,742 US dollars to 100, uh, uh, 1,927 US dollars. So that's 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 the liquidation used by this specific position. You can use different one. And again, if if price if price goes between in this uh, price range, which we hear on the screen, then that's okay. We use this LLAMM uh, mechanism. Uh, but if it goes out of this range lower, then there will be uh, actually liquidation, uh, which is uh, the same as, as for MakerDAO. Uh, what this design gives us, I told you, but just recap and repeat uh, what we have here. No so-called hard liquidations of your position. So it's actually not closed at certain uh, price minimum. Uh, you, your position can be saved, it can restore uh, if the price of your collateral goes up, bounce back. Uh, you lose a relatively small amount every time this happens. Uh, so nothing makes money on you. And again, more you can more to borrow, you can afford uh, more uh, uh, assets, more CRE USD to borrow. And that means more capital efficient model. That, that's it for CRE USD. Now we go to our uh, last stable coin, uh, which we will look at. There are many, much more uh, stable coins than, than I talk about, but they're pretty close by, by design to what we discussed. It, that's the Frax stable coin. And um, again, what's the capital? What's actually the key issue for uh, this? Uh, I would say field of uh, making stable coins protocols. Um, that's against uh, capital efficiency. So the, the, you, you need one US dollar for the centralized uh, stable coins uh, for each stable coin issued. So it's one US, US dollar value on real bank accounts for USDT, USDC. You, you need even more for the centralized uh, stable coins like DAI. That's one and a half US dollar. Uh, because you use volatile volatile collateral. The change of collateral, uh, the price of the collateral is changing. So we always need so, uh, somehow additional uh, reserve to 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 be sure that uh, we we will not be under the water in terms of uh, actually uh, collateral behind the money we've issued. But what uh, Frax was trying to do, uh, they tried to issue the stable coin which uses less than one dollar of real uh actually uh us dollar backed assets so how they did it and how they tried to do it because now now it's changed and we will also talk about what's changed now uh uh they uh, actually say that uh, our frax um stable coin is backed by usdc we remember that usdc is is a uh, um uh 100 backed uh, centralized stable coin and they and for now we see that each frax is backed by uh 94.75 percent uh, of usdc at some point of time uh this uh, collateral ratio was even close to 80 percent but it's not it, it never touched 80 percent remember terra luna collapse uh, they they had almost zero uh, collateral, so it wasn't uh, backed by anything except for this Luna token. But what what the rest part uh, uh, actually of this stable coin is backed by? It's backed by so-called FXS FXS token. It's that's the governance token of uh, the Frax ecosystem. And how protocol uh, works and how it worked. Uh, when we when we have our frax stable coin price higher than one US dollar, you can actually what you can do, you can go to the uh, frax protocol, uh, bring USDC and if FX is token 
uh, for one dollar value and mint frax stable coin which costs higher than one dollar let's say one point one dollar that's extreme case but nevertheless so in this case you earn additionally 10 cents from this operation for which arbitrage so that's that's what's happened uh, when the price of the frax stable coin is lower than one dollar everyone for some reason is selling our frax and, and there's no demand for this then what you can do you can again buy this frax which costs let's say 0 0.99 cents bring it to the frax protocol uh burn it into the frax protocol so you decrease amount uh the quantity of frax stable coins in this in the system and receive from frax protocol uh a certain amount of US, usdc and fx is token but price the total value that you get will be equal to one dollar so you bring to the pro protocol something which costs uh, 0 0.99 cents and get something which costs one dollar so you uh, have one one cent uh, profit from this so that's was that was the idea how, how the frax was going to function and they actually the protocol actually did function in this way but they changed it so that that's the frax model so minting and redeeming uh, when uh, so that's the stabilization mechanism when price of the frax is higher you can uh, actually put in uh, put uh, into the protocol usdc and fxs uh, governance token and and mint frax when lower on the other hand you send um, frax stable coin into the uh, frax protocol uh, burn it and redeem usdc and and the fx is so that's that's uh, the general very simplified model but uh in uh on this february 15th february this year the, the governance of frax, frax protocol decided that they want to have colorization ratio equal to 100 percent so they do not want more to play with this uh, additional small portion of F fx is governance token which is actually their own token so we cannot say that it's, it's real hard collateral uh, and they say uh, in this fib frax improvement pro uh, uh, proposal fib fib it's like eip it's like bip eip is the ethereum improvement pro pro uh, proposal bip is bitcoin improvement proposal so for frax protocol we have fib uh, fib 188 the cost of being slightly under collateralized now far outweighed the benefits especially because it can undermine the perceived safety of frax gradually shifting the protocol to 100 percent uh, collateralization ratio is the best path uh, forward for the long-term health and growth of the protocol say so you see they decided to sacrifice this uh, small a uh, portion of uh, uh, collateralization ratio let's say five percent just to make sure that the, uh, their frax is safe and uh, 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 actually nothing can undermine the safety of this stable coin so uh, but that's not uh, everything that uh, frax protocol did they also uh, uh pro proposing so-called fra frax price index fpi fpi is also stable coin but this stable coin is uh, packed not to us dollar but it's rather packed to so-called cpi uh, consumer price index of united of the united states so the uh, united states uh, prints uh, as far as i remember every month this cpi index and gradually frax price index is 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 getting to to this to this uh, estimate it means that right now you can uh, buy this fpy and make sure that the value of uh, your fpy will always be according to uh the uh, 
consumer price index of the United States. It means that uh, when, uh, for example, uh, for one year, we have 5% uh, inflation in, uh, in US dollar, which is actually uh, officially admitted by US government with this uh, index, then your FPY, uh, let's think at the beginning of the year, it costed $1. At the end of the year, it will be it will uh, the price of FPY will be one point uh, uh, zero five cents. So it's one one zero uh, one point zero five US dollar. You get five cents uh, additionally according to the price index. Uh, again, uh, as well as uh, FXS, the the frogs uh, have. Uh, the governance, uh, the governing token for FPY, which is which called F uh, Frax Price Index Shares, it's also uh, for used actually to it 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 gets all the profit from so-called senior rush from printing this FPY, and if it's not enough uh, resources to to keep up uh, to keep uh, the pack of FPY to the uh, pr uh, price uh, to consumer price index, then it's minted. Uh, FPIS is minted, so that's how that's how it works. Very close to to the initial model uh, invented by not invented, but actually they, they did not invent it. They used it uh, in uh, for for the printing stable coin F Prax and FXS is is the governance token. Here is the same. So. Uh, where, uh, how it works in terms of uh, technical realization, uh, Chainlink, uh, that's the provider of uh, on-chain oracles in the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, they created a special consumer price index uh, oracle, and as soon as uh, U.S. government uh, is, is issuing this uh, CPI inflation rate, uh, the inflation rate uh, is actually uh, this data is taken by, by the Chainlink Oracle, and and then uh, what uh, FPI stablecoin uh, is using it uh, actually to uh, increase every second uh, the price uh, to make the price of uh, our FPI stablecoin. Uh, in accordance with with uh, with the flinch with the flinching. so the pack calculation factors is updated every thirty days, as I said every month, and every once we update uh, uh, the the price of our stable uh, our uh, CPU index stable coin FPI. Another great invention of the Frax, uh, it's so called algorithm market operations controller controllers because there are a few of them so it's uh, in short it's AMO. AMO control controllers that's actually um, uh, smart contracts uh, which uh, uh, works automatically and uh, what they do they actually ensuring a stable exchange uh, rate of the frogs and and also they allow the protocol to earn additional uh, profit from their operations so they work as the central bank's monetary ledger. And you may know that the central bank is doing uh, market operations. Uh, so that's the really close uh, alternative of what central, ban central banks are doing, but that's automated. So uh, the AMOS can do four actually things. They work in the four different, uh, let's say, uh, uh, regimes, I, I, would, I would call it. So uh, when it's the decollateralization, that's when we reduce the collateralization ratio. We need to reduce it. Uh, when uh, nothing happens, when the peg is stable, one to one dollar, one frax is, is uh, uh, one dollar or very close to one dollar. Uh, actually, the strategy operates in, equi in equilibrium and does not change the collateralization ratio. Uh, then again, when we lost the pack, 
That's the recollateralization is part of the strategy that increases the collateral, the collateral ratio. And very important thing is so-called FXS 1559. That's all that our AMO is earned. Uh, we spent uh, to the actually uh, holders of FX is FXS is our governance token and the holders of the governance token uh, get all the additional profit from our AMOS uh, uh, on their staked FXS because it's more complicated than it might seem because to earn something of, on your FXS, you need to stake it for a certain period up to four years. You get so-called VFXS and on, the, on this VFXS, distributed all the profit from all AMOS. So that's that's how it works. That's the uh, explanation of uh, this proposal. So uh, this uh, rule allows us to, again, automatically on a smart contract level to calculate all excess value in the system, in, in our AMOR, and send this uh, uh, value, this additional profit into the FFXS, yield contract, so-called. Uh, uh, actually, how many uh, uh, AMO controllers do we have? We have uh, four AMO strategies. So the first one is investor AMO, second one is curve AMO, the third one is liquidity and the lending AMO. Uh, you may then get into the de detail with each of these AMOS. Uh, the idea is that uh, for investors uh, AMO, we have some additional assets and as a protocol, and we may put these assets into some uh, another DeFi protocols like Aave, Compound and others, and earn profit on our assets. The Curve AMO, uh, that's very important uh, one. I'll mention to you the Curve protocol, which is used for generally for exchanging different stable coins between each other. We have our Frax stable coin. So we place our Frax in one of the pools. This AMO uh, put it into the, uh, into the Curve pool. Uh, and again, uh, the fact that we put something into the pool, we are as a protocol, the liquidity provider, it allows us to earn profit from uh, uh, from trading, exchanging uh, our stable coin to another stable coins and back and and back, and also we get additional so-called CRV rewards, curve rewards. CRV is also governance token of uh, of the curve, and it's even more complicated because with the, if we get enough CRV stable uh, CRV governance tokens, then we can vote and increase distribution of CRV tokens on our specific liquidity pool. So it's everything, it's, it's not so easy. And the FRAX, one of the main holders of, of the CRV, and that's their competitive advantage, which allow them to be very much efficient and more profitable and in liquidity in, in uh, uh, so-called LSDs, liquid staking derivatives, that's, that's the Ethereum one. Uh, liquidity Armor works uh, with Uniswap and other AMMs. We will talk about AMMs on our next lecture. And the last one, uh, the Lending Armor issues FRAX uh, into the uh, over collateralized uh, positions on different uh, lending protocols. Uh, and by the way, uh, today, Frax has uh, so-called Frax land. That's the build inside the protocol, their own lending protocol. So again, lending protocol, we will have another separate topic on this. I will explain you how they work, but that's actually banks on, on blockchain where you put one asset and get as a loan another, another asset with, with certain collateral. Uh, so more uh, 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 information about the last one, the lending armor. It's very close to uh, D3M module used by MakerDAO. 
and we already touched this topic because uh, again uh, uh, what what this AMO is doing uh, when we have extremely high interest rate on certain uh, liquidity pool uh, on certain lending protocol uh, for example we have on Aave uh, 10 percent APY, uh, APY for the depositors that's very interesting annual percentage rate and what our AMO is doing it automatically prints FRAX stable coin at, and uh, adds this FRAX into the liquidity pool decreasing this interest rate to, to the programmed level we say for example we want uh, interest rate to be no higher than 2% or 3%. And as soon as it is higher, this lending armor is printing FRAX and adding to this liquidity pool on any decentralized lending platform, platform. Which platform we use, how this lending armor is working is also decided and approved by the governance. And the governance is working based on the FXS token and everyone which uh, who holds this FX as token, they may uh, vote with this token and say, yes, we approve this operation. No, we do not approve this operation. So this is how this DAO, so-called DAO system works because Prax is also DAO, like, like a maker DAO. Uh, more closer to our lending Amor, we see that uh, uh, that's about 70 million uh, US dollars of FRAX printed, lent actually. And uh, most of them is lent in the black one. The black one is the FRAX lent AMO. So that's their own uh, FRAX, FRAX lent lending protocol. Some of uh, uh, the money also printed for Aave, for Tribe, for Olympus, for different, for different uh, lending protocols. So that's all you, you, can, you can go to. Uh, the Frax Finance uh, website and everything is is there. So and you can actually uh, check every uh, every each data. So everything is on chain. So you can always uh, compare what they print and what reality is because it's all on chain. Nothing is hidden from you. So everything is clear and transparent. So and now we go to so-called uh, this dessert. That's actually uh, examples of the real uh, strategies which will let you earn something on the DeFi and how we can earn on DeFi. The first one is I call it conservative strategy. It's very easy. You go to MakerDAO Oasis app site, uh, find earn. And look what what you, you what you can do with your die, for example. You can um, put die with one percent APY. That's very simple, very conservative, but very low profitability. One percent is really low. You might have have you, you well in the past. You could have actually invest into so-called Uni V3 die USDC liquidity pool and earn up to five, maybe 3% APY, but now it's full, so you cannot do it. It's not, it's not possible. So it's, it's, it's just uh, filled, fill in everything. They, they wanted to attract a certain amount of uh, money. They did it. Now, if no one pulling out of this pool, you cannot add there. So that's, that's how it works. If we want a more risky strategy, that strategy, which I use, uh, for a few years, that's the synthetics protocol. Uh, well, it, it lets you earn 2025 APY, a, APR or APY. But the problem is that you use uh, volatile tokens. So you need to buy SNX, that's the governance uh, token of synthetics protocol. Then you need to stake it. Uh, you need to print issue as USD, which is also stable coin. That's the fifth example. Uh, I do not get into the details, but that's you need to know uh, that you can with USNX print as USD, and every week you can claim uh, rewards in SNX, 
and SUSD. So that's that's what happens. Then you can take SUSD, which you've actually printed or minted or issued, bring it into the Curve protocol and uh, earn more, uh, nine to eight uh, percent. Maybe it's that's changed because I took these figures a few months ago. Maybe now it's lower, but still, again, we uh, buy one token, uh, take this token into the smart contract, mint another token. Uh, take this another token stable coin uh, and put them into another protocol and from that another protocol we also claim another another tokens because uh, what we have here you see that all the profit comes to us in the crv that's the governance token of curve protocol and op that's because that's all happens on optimism not on ethereum uh, it's another blockchain uh, L l2 uh actually um blockchain for uh, uh op optimistic rollup uh for 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 for, for the ethereum uh, compatible with ethereum and op that's the optimism token that's the governance token of this of this uh, blockchain uh there are certain risks because again snx is volatile asset uh you also need to keep a certain ratio five to one for five US dollar worth of your SNX token, you can only print one SUSD. And if it goes lower, you cannot claim weekly rewards. Uh, one more very serious issue is that you have a certain so-called active debt in SUSD system, and it and, and it also may increase. SNX and SNX rewards are frozen for 12 months. So what you can claim these rewards, but you can use them, sell them, this SNX, only after a year. And of course, you spend some if on each transaction on optimism. Uh, that's not a great amount, that's low, but still you, you spend maybe 10, maybe 20 cents uh, for every, every transaction on optimism blockchain. That's SNX price. You see that it's really volatile. So it was one and six dollar. It was two and two and eight, almost two times uh, volatility for for three months. And the last one, that's the, the complex strategy, and, uh, and what you can do here. So that's if you love Ethereum, because there was a question: Why do I need to actually? uh take ethereum put it into the lending protocol and then uh, uh, take stable coins why why so complex maybe i just sell ethereum for us dollars and that's it well that might be uh simple but if you are convinced in the future of uh digital assets like ethereum like bitcoin what you can do you can actually take your ethereum and uh, bring it to one of the, in our case, that's the FRAX, uh, to the FRAX protocol, liquid staking derivatives protocol. And what you get after that, you put Ethereum into the smart contract and get SFRX if, that's, that's here. What is SFRX if? That's so-called interest bearing token, which accrues the profit from uh, participation into the proof of stake consensus ethereum mechanism because um last year ethereum went from proof of work to proof of stake uh, consensus uh, uh, consensus and now if you stake 32 ethereums for every node you can take uh part into the actually uh, making the blocks producing the blocks on ethereum blockchain and earn on this. So what what this SFRX is doing, it's actually they're accruing this additional yield from participation into the Ethereum consensus. Uh, what it means for you, it means that you do not just have Ethereum, but you have Ethereum which grows in value uh, about uh, for the for the FRAX. It it uh, actually in the range from five to 10%, depending on their, um, how much fees spent on Ethereum blockchain, how actually congested is the network. So again, 
why, for example, you might want to do it, you, be, you believe into the, in Ethereum, then you have additional 5% AP, APY on your Ethereum. Then you take your SFRX, use it as a collateral, Frax is our stable coin we were discussing today. Then again, you take the Frax that you've uh, taken as a loan and put it into another pair as a liquidity on the same Frax land. That's the Frax FX is uh, pair as you becoming a liquidity provider. And then what you, what you do, you take your uh, like LP tokens and stake them with LP Frax V1 uh, uh, staking facility. And again, uh, what you do, you claim FX is reward. So that's very complicated one. I, 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 I was actually telling you that it's complicated, but what we have here, uh, that, that was a snapshot of profitability I was, do, I was doing uh, last week. Now it's changed, maybe it's, it's lower, I think it's lower. So when you mint and stake Ethereum, you get additional 6.5% annual APY in Ethereum. That's the first profit you have. Then when you take uh, the Frax loan, you actually pay because that's the loan, you have to pay for the loan. And it's 1.2%, but, when you take your loan and invest it into the land uh, frax as a liquidity provider, you have almost 8%. So you see that you take the loan minus 1.2%, put it into the deposit on which you get 7.9. So it means that uh, as a result, you are in a plus. And uh, actually staking your this LP share gives you additional 11% in FX is uh, uh, coin. So you have profit in free uh, coins. So in it, you earn in Ethereum, you earn in stable coins, and you have additional profit in FX is. All in all, you have close to 12% APY. So that's how it works. And that I think that it's not that's not the most complicated strategy. Maybe you can find more complicated. So DeFi is all about it. So it's not just take some token, sell some token. So it's it's very easy. That's not interesting. DeFi is about this interest rate arbitrage. You take from one platform, bring it to another, have a, on a different blockchains today. It's not only on Ethereum, but because Ethereum today is extremely expensive so it's not uh actually if you don't have, have if you do not have 100 us dollars i think it doesn't make sense to, to do anything on ethereum uh you can do a lot of things on Arb arbitrum optimism with with synthetics so that's that's defined and the frax at certain point of time it was 36 then it was almost four now it's about seven six us dollars so I think that Frax is quite interesting investment in the long term. So, and the last, uh, I will have a creative task for you, which is what happened with USDJ stablecoin. USDJ stablecoin is a stablecoin issued on the Tron ecosystem, which is also Ethereum with compatible. And what I want uh, from you to make a short essay is to explain why in February, it happened in February this year, the price of USDJ stablecoin was almost two and a half US dollar. So what happened? I told you that all stable coins, the right one, which is actually, uh, we, we think it is stable coins, they back to $1 and everyone is afraid that uh, the stable coin will lose the pack. So it means that it will cost 0.8 US dollars, 0, 0 0.7, 0 0.5 is a disaster, half of the dollar. But in this case, USDJ is cost two and a half. So it's two and a half times more than it's packed. Why? Why it's happened? 
So it will give you, if you deep and, uh, get into this, it will give you understanding of how stable coins work and what might happen with them. Because uh, you would never believe this, this might happen to stable coin. So that's the sources. I used uh, 47 minutes. I'm talking to you. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day. If you have questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you for a lot, Sergei. Yes, uh, today we have prepared uh, for you not only quiz uh, and uh, interesting task. Um, what kind of form of your answer? Uh, I will add this information uh, to classroom. So wait uh, for the update to the classroom. And um, thank you so much for your attention. Okay, we, have, we don't have a question. Thank you. Oh, we have some question, one moment. So great presentation, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. We were uh, actually, I was, uh, I, I actually improving it every time. So I had something, so it's not just, presentation which I did uh, last week and presenting to you it's it's to work over a few months now uh would it make sense to post white papers of the protocol that uh, that we will discuss on the next lecture beforehand but that's what I was doing with you because if you take uh, the, the white paper of CRV USD st uh, stable coin honestly there are a few formulas which does not give you anything so it, it's really you know it's like scientific paper. So if I start to discuss with you these scientific papers, you would say, no, we don't like uh, this type of way of actually teaching, goodbye. Uh, therefore, I'm explaining to you uh, as easy as possible for you to understand what's actually inside. So I, I'm doing it. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, uh, waiting for our update and uh, see you soon on the next week. See you. Bye. Bye.